Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Wayne and this is Wayne's Fish World. Thanks for coming back to a new... Ow, I just stomped my freaking toe. Let's keep the video going. Anyways guys, recently I've come back home to YouTube and I put out a couple of videos and if you've missed them, I'll put them in the description below. But in the past videos, I've given you guys a little bit of updates, I've gotten some new fish, and we talked about what direction we're going to go with the channel and what we're going to do to get my tanks back up to par. So today's video is the first step into getting this channel back to where it used to be and going further and getting my fish in the conditions they need to be housed in. So you guys remember my 75 gallon goldfish tank, right? Let's take a look at what it looks like. So even though this tank has gone to trash, it looks like a swamp. The water conditions are still quite safe for these fish. It might be unsightly to the eye, but I never let the water quality get to be to the point where it's unsafe for the fish. Ammonia nitrites and nitrates are still unpresent in this aquarium. Same thing with phosphates. None of it is present. But in reality, even though this water quality is still safe for the fish, it looks like trash. And this is an aquarium. We've got to get this tank looking better. So there was a time with this aquarium, I kept it crystal clear. How did it become such a atrocious tank? Well, if you guys go back to the first video I put out when I came back on YouTube in December 2017, I talked about how I didn't want to sit still and I could never stay in one place. I was constantly moving. I didn't want to be playing with my aquariums. I was rather be doing other things. And actually, that those two collages over there is exactly what I'm talking about. It's a lot of memories that I made this summer. It's not all of them, but it's some good memories that I made this summer. And I never kept up with the husbandry in the tank. When I designed my aquariums, I set them up to the point where they're going to take care of themselves to an extent. I let nature take care of my aquarium because in the end, I'm not doing anything. I'm just guiding it. But there are laws in nature and there are chains of events and ecosystems established for a reason. And there's ways that they do that. And if you try to mimic nature or set up conditions that are preferable and that nature can take its own course, most of the time your aquariums will be forgiving, but you still have to play your part. And the part I didn't play shows. So the filtration I was running on this aquarium was definitely adequate. The filtration was two 75 gallon Aquion hang on the back filters. They're more than capable of running the filtration on this tank. I've been running them on this tank for ever since it was, t uh, since it was set up and the water quality was always clear. The problem with it is that I never cleaned the filter pads. And when I did, it was way overdue. The tank was basically needing an oil change. It was well overdue. Pollutants build up into the aquarium so much because even though the filters were running, their filter cartridges were clogged. They couldn't take any more waste. Thus that waste was just free floating in the water column. But what I did is I took the Aquion 75 gallon hang on the back filters off of this aquarium. I'm giving them a deep clean and I'm probably gonna put them back on. But for right now, I'm bringing out the big guns. Let's bring out the Fluo FX6 that used to be on my 125 gallon. So what I'm doing with this filter is I'm taking all the media out of it and I'm gonna go ahead and put my secret weapon in there. And that's polyester pillow fabric. This stuff polishes your water and it traps the finest debris. When I put this on my koi ponds outside, in combination with the UV sterilizer that's 36 watts, my pond is four feet down and within a day, you can't see two inches from the bottom. And after about 24 hours of running the polyester pillow fabric in my uh, canister filter for the pond, in combination with the UV sterilizer, I can see the bottom crystal clear. That's how much particles it traps. It traps the finest particles. And this stuff is very reliable and it's very cheap. Um, you can get a bag for it from Walmart for about $3. So I'm gonna go ahead and toot the horn of the Fluvo FX6. And it's not really that the filter is so great. It is a good filter, but it's what I'm putting in it. You could put this polyester pillow fabric in a cheap canister filter you can find on eBay or Amazon and Quite honestly, you're probably gonna get almost the same exact results, just not as quickly. And the reason not as quickly is because the flow rate of the Fluva FX6 is just very good. It's a strong filter. These filters are rated for a 400 gallon aquarium. Um, 
top notch, they're powerful, they've got tons of water flow, and that's why I like them so much. But in combination of having a powerful filter loaded with that polyester pillow fabric, you're gonna see some amazing results. I want you to keep in mind, I did not do one water change while cleaning this aquarium. A couple things I wanted to do at first. <clears throat> I wanted to make this tank dirty as possible. So I disrupted the sand, I cleaned the aquarium glass with an old credit card, I made this tank filthy. And every time the Fluval FX6 would clean the tank up, I'd go back in there, I'd scrape the glass again, I'd hit the substrate again, I'd blast it, I'd, I'd wave it off and let stuff fly into the water column. I would keep things suspended in the water column. Kind of like you reefers, you know all about that. In less than 24 hours, the 75 gallon filter went from looking like a swamp to somewhat of a good looking aquarium. After about 24 hours, I turned the filter off, I opened it up, and I took a bunch of carbon and I loaded it into two 4x8 or 4x12, I can't remember, I think it's the 4x8 media bags. I pre-wrenched the carbon and I put them in the, uh, the holsters that are present inside of the Fluve FX6. And I ran that carbon to remove any organic tannins in the water, any odors or anything like that. And the results were very good. Now that I actually can see the tank, you can see the pleco that I have uh, right there. And I do plan on letting that pleco get as big as it wants to in this aquarium. If it outgrows it, well, I've got other housing methods for it. Um, I did miss a couple spots to scrape in the glass right here, right there, and such. But now I can see in the aquarium. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean off those areas that I missed on the glass, clean out my hang on the back filters, and I'm going to introduce a whole bunch of carbon media inside the uh, cartridges and let that carbon polish the water. So yeah, the results of running the polyester pillow fabric with the Fluvo FX6, constantly pecking at the sand and cleaning the glass and keeping all the solids suspended in the water column just like you would in salt water. And then finally adding carbon to the tank, the results are definitely there. I'm sorry about the glare. This time of day, there's a window right there. There's also a window right there, which is good for the goldfish because they get natural sunlight. But you can see my white ass right there in the reflection. But yeah, the fish are happy. I've already fed them earlier today, so I'm not going to act as spunky. Water quality is crystal clear. There's the bristle shabumpkin I've been talking about. Fish are doing great. There's no food over there. <laughs> so you guys are probably wondering, what's the direction of this aquarium and which way are we going to go? Well, now that I've got this tank back on track, I've got to update the lighting. You're probably wondering, what happened to all the crypts in this aquarium? This tank was polluted with a vast jungle of plants and now it's kind of bare. Well, the reason for that is because the previous lighting I had on here was just too uh, 5,000 K bulbs on here, uh, 8.5 watts LED, which is about 850 lumens each bulb. So it was running about 1,600 lumens, roughly 1,700 lumens in this tank. And that was plenty for the crypts. Then I updated the lighting that, which is currently on it right now. And those plants were used to this light level. And I took that light off and the crypts melted back. So that was my fault. It wasn't due to water quality or anything like that. The goldfish didn't eat them, and if they did eat them, well, these plants wouldn't be here at all. So I'm going to put a 48-inch uh, LED on this aquarium. I've got to order it. This is just a 30-inch one. I've got it on here just so you can see the fish. It makes them look really nice. It brings out their colors. But once I get that lighting on this aquarium, I'm going to go ahead and plant this tank again. I'm going to do the same thing as before because I like the look of it. I'm going to introduce several species of crypts. Crypts Boralis, Parva, Undulata, uh, Wendetti Red, Bronze, Green, you name it. Far as filtration, you're seeing a lot of the bubbles come out of this Fluval FX6. Now, I've tightened the lid and everything. Um, I think it's sucking air somewhere. I'm just not sure. It's not sucking from the air stones. There's one over here and there's one in this corner right here. And you can see the air bubbles are definitely not going into the intake. Um, I think I am going to put the Fluval, I'm sorry, the Aquion hang on the back filters back on this tank. 
When I first put this canister filter on this aquarium, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous for that flow rate. But my goldfish are keeping up with it. I'm feeding them more for two reasons. One, they're more active. I'm not really worried about the Shabumkin. He's a slender body, so of course he can handle that flow rate. But I'm feeding the fish more because one, now they're exercising more because of this flow rate. And two, I can feed them more because I have a much stronger filtration on this aquarium. Once I plant this aquarium, I think I'm gonna plant two aquariums at the same time and show you guys at different dates. But when I order the plants for this aquarium, I'm also gonna order plants from 125 gallon, which is behind me right now. And I apologize to you freshwater people and you saltwater people. I haven't really been showing you guys tropical fish in a while. It's been mostly goldfish. And yes, that's what I'm leaning towards right now because I mean, do you blame me? I love these fish. This is my favorite tank. They've got personality. I can pet these fish. They come up and eat out of my hand and they're beautiful. So that's, there's, and look how big they're getting. I got some of these fish when they were so small and now they're getting massive. Love them. But uh, it's time we dive back into tropical tanks, angelfish, African cichlids, salt water. It's coming guys. So I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek on next week's video. So I gotta address one thing. In last week's video, I talked about maybe setting up a 125 gallon goldfish tank. That got more love than I expected. Um, and part of me meant that, but I, my 75 gallon goldfish tank is going so well right now that I don't wanna move it. And if I do, I'm gonna take all that substrate and everything from that tank and transplant it over to the 125 gallon let that bacteria colonize for that water level and then maybe add a few fish later on take it very slowly but i have to find 125 gallon and both of my 125 gallons i did not buy uh store price i got them secondhand use i'm not going to spend about 400 dollars or plus more on a tank um i got good deals on both of them and if i come across a good deal on 125 gallon maybe i will set up another goldfish tank or transfer the goldfish tank into 125 gallon now that i think about it i've never walked you guys through each of my fish in this tank so if you guys want to see each fish individually and walk through the tank and talk about each fish and where they came from and you know the species and how big they'll get etc and their personalities and their traits let me know and I'll make a video on that. That way you guys can stay up to date on all the fish that I have in this tank. Um, there are a few new species in there if you've been paying close attention. And also I had an Easter egg on my, vit on my desk right there earlier in the video. So if you missed that, definitely go back and check it out. Until then, I'll see you guys next week with a brand new video. Hope you liked the video guys. Comment, rate, and subscribe and I'll see you later.